Good morning, everyone. Today is the uh, first day of post operation. The morning, and uh, I had to uh, throughout the day yesterday, every four hours, take my prescribed pain medicine. It was not severe. I was saying on a scale of one to ten, my pain was a level of uh, three, and. When I left uh, at the end of the four hour period of taking each pain medicine pill, it went up to maybe a level five. So definitely tolerable. Certainly not as severe as the two prior surgeries I had. <clears throat> and hopefully uh, I can wean myself off of the pain medicine throughout the day today. And uh, not have to have that in my system any longer starting tomorrow. I know I'm still going to use it today. Number one, we live in a damp, rainy climate right now. It's raining outside, and I don't care what they say, the scientists. Um, humid, damp weather does affect surgeries, and even for years to come out there after, I can tell you when it's going to rain three days in advance, as I'm sure many other people can attest to have had uh, surgeries uh, as well. Uh, at any rate, I'm going today. Big reveal. I'm going to. I'm allowed to remove the main the main bandage, and I'm going to show you that. And there should be, uh, according to my doctor, the surgeon, uh, more scarring and uh, scarring, more bruising, I should say, than previous surgery due to my age. Um, as we get older, bruising um, is more evident after. Um, this type of thing, and uh, we should not be surprised to see some, you know, what he said, severe bruising there, which will go away rather quickly. So I'm uh, going to remove the primary bandage. Then there are what they call seri strips mm, over the uh, the um, stitched sites, and uh, those will dissolve over time. I am prepared to shower today which I'm going to do after I remove this bandage, and then I'll follow up with you after the shower to show you how it appears then. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm gonna just set the uh, camera down for a moment and see what we can do here to give you a, an idea of how things look. So there's the primary bandage. As you can see, it goes pretty low. And I'm going to remove that now. And we'll see how things look down there. If I can get my hands on it. There we go. Oh boy. This is going to be fun. These are definitely strong bandages. slowly to be careful not to disturb anything. It's critical. This is like unwrapping a Christmas present that you always wanted. Alright, not too bad there. expected. The worst part is removing these bandages, especially when there's hair on his stomach. Ow. Holy moly, I never had a wax treatment. 
I imagine this is what that feels like. Stand by, I'm gonna have to turn for five separate reasons. So that is a good sign. Okay, let's see how we look over here. So there's the incision, as you can see right there. And that doesn't look too bad at all. I don't see any bruising, but that may be coming in a day or so. And underneath here, underneath this site, is a patch in place. I'm not going to touch it right now because it's tender. But um, as it, you may recall, the other, the other location, well, yeah, it's definitely tender. My other surgical site was right here. Um, somewhere you can see the old scar there, very minor. And I imagine this would be the same. He said this was a little lower. And because I did tear something inside there as well, um, there should be more bruising. But I'll let you know as we go through the next couple of weeks how things are shaping up. Uh, I do have uh, a follow-up appointment with... Um, the surgeon um, next week, and uh, we're going to take a look at this, see how things are healing, how I'm feeling, and then there will be one other follow-up in six months thereafter to see how uh, you know progress is being made. So right now, I'm just going to jump in the shower quick, and I'll get right back to you after I'm done, see how things are cleaned up a little bit down there, and how we're looking. But I'm feeling pretty good, and uh, not as bad as I anticipated it to be. And I'm, I'm thankful for, for the good Lord for that. And, and the, the excellent hands I was in with the, uh, Dr. Siddiqui, uh, my surgeon and his staff there at the hospital. All great folks. And uh, I'll be on with you in just a moment. Stand by, please. Hey, we're back. Mm, out of the shower. And don't we all feel better, even under normal conditions after showering. So that wasn't too bad. And... Um, I give you a, a shot of the uh, incision site as the seri strip started to actually fall off. So now you can see where, where my incision is, right along there. It looks very clean and neat. And the seri strip started to f uh, fall off, the sur surgical strip. Uh, I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to apply some of this ointment onto the strip. It's an antibacterial ointment that the hospital gave me apply it back and it'll fall off in a day or so. I don't want to rush things along too much. And uh, that'll be it for that. And the last thing we'll do is, I'm a cologne guy, so I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. Give myself some nice Jalan Musk for men. Yes, I'm old school, I'm from the 50s and 60s and 70s. So um, that's one of my colognes of choice, to each his own, but uh, sometimes it makes you feel good to smell good. Or well, makes you, yeah, that's right. Okay, who wants to smell like a hospital? Not me. So we go with a, I'm gonna do this the right way with a Q-tip, not with my fingers, even though I just, just showered. And the side is tender and it's somewhat numb, just to tell you the truth. So I'm gonna put, oops, look at that. Put a little bit of that. Remember another thing from the 50s and 60s? A little dab will do you. One of you folks from the men guys from back then will know that. That's from Brill Cream, as you may recall. We all greased our ears back then. And now it's, I don't know, with the dry period of the 60s, where it was the, the hippie look, natural. And now we're back to the 80s, big hair. And then the 90s, we started doing in the 2000s, gel, uh, moosing. And I says, um, when I tell my wife, she likes me to have what little hair I've left when I let it grow a little bit to put mousse in my hair. She says, it looks like I have more than I really do. So when I do that, I says, I'm going hunting today, hon. I'm uh, getting ready for the mousse. So that's a little inside joke. 
Well, he does a beautiful, neat job, Dr. Siddiqui. I gotta tip my hat off with him. Practice makes perfect, and he's been doing it a long time. Uh, my, my, you know, my thoughts about insurance and all that kind of thing. So I'm not gonna make this a political rant. It's not about that. But uh, prior to uh, November of last year, um, you know, I, I'm working part-time. I'm not on an official corporate job or anything like that or my own business any longer. So I didn't have any health insurance prior to November um, for several years. And with the hopes that, you know, I took a gamble. I'm not ready for, uh, I'm not eligible for Medicare, Medicare, because I'm only going to be 62 next month. So I took a chance, be proactive, be healthy, and uh, hopefully nothing happens. But that's really a foolish, uh, fool's man's way of thinking. God forbid I get into an auto accident or I have a fall of some kind. It's not the, not the right thought process. So uh, I did purchase uh, insurance. First availability came up was in, uh, under the Obama plan, uh, the New York Exchange in uh, January. Uh, actually, I bought it in December. It became effective January 1st. And I didn't pick the platinum, uh, not the gold, but I did what I could afford, which was the silver plan. It has a reasonable deductible and a reasonable uh, yearly out-of-pocket. Certainly, God forbid, if that happened, I had enough funds to bite the bullet for the year, uh, year payout as an individual. I'm not eligible under my wife's uh, employer's plan, which is all, it's a good plan, but I wasn't eligible. So I purchased my own insurance. Um, it's $586 a month. I don't like paying it. Uh, but I have to and you know this surgery would have been uh, definitely out of my budget uh, If I had not had that and you know, it's only gonna be uh, what, Three more years till I get Medicare. So uh, I, we can manage this in our budget by accommodating other things uh, I took on more will be taking on more hours at work number one and uh, To make up the difference and we cut back certain things and we'll get into that in other videos We cut back on certain things that uh, we still enjoy the same lifestyle we had and that made up the difference in the cost of the insurance. So we basically uh, stood still and, and got a little bit ahead, actually, even though I have the insurance, which I'm, I feel blessed that I do have it. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you my, for my wife, for uh, Maria, for encouraging me to do that. And thank you, Dr. Siddiqui, for making me suggest, uh, suggesting that I do purchase it. Um, so you, sometimes you have to open up your mind, open up your ears, listen, don't talk so much, like I do sometimes and let it digest so i did get insurance and i feel good about that you need to pick a plan if you don't have any insurance for those that you that don't are stuck in between like i am this is a is a, is a symptom of uh, the obama plan there are people that fall out of the uh, uh public assistance part and so we're in a gap and there's a people that can't afford it totally and so that's tough so you have to make an adjustment and try to adjust expenses or increase your income somehow even if it means taking on a part-time job. So uh, until the time you can get on Medicare or find an employer that pays you uh, or partially pays your medical. So that's my hit on that. And uh, I'm glad I have it and I'm glad I'm recovering. I will update you again in about a week after I see the surgeon, Dr. Siddiqui again, and uh, let you know what his thoughts are on, on the outcome. I'm very pleased with it. It's soft, it's tender, there's some swelling here. That's not normally my, you know, my bulge that it would hang over a belt or something like that. That's uh, not, this whole area here is def def definitely tender and a little numb. So that is to be expected post-surgery. But what I was expecting, I don't see, is any major bruising that he indicated would probably be prevalent. I don't know if that's to come yet or not, but we'll let you know. And again, after the uh, week follow-up with Dr. Siddiqui, I'll follow up with you in six months to see how we're doing. I predict, based upon what I see here, a very good outcome. And I plan on walking the dog today around the neighborhood, and I feel energetic enough from that, and not too sore that I can't do that. And he does, he did tell me to get up on my feet, get moving again. When you move, it, uh, you circulate. Circulation brings all the good nutrients into a, a uh, wound site, and it will actually help myself heal. All right, folks, you have a great week, and we'll touch base with you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good morning, folks. So, uh, Ralph with you again. Today is Sunday, uh, March 1st, and uh, something you'll notice different today than the uh, previous days. This is the fifth day since my surgery. I had it on Wednesday. So, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, day five. Um, no pain meds on my vanity counter, no uh, stool softener. Um, the pain meds did serve a purpose the initial day. Initially, what the doctor told me and what the anesthesiologist just told me is that. Um, right after the surgery, they're going to inject the site uh, with a large amount of lidocaine 
to uh, numb it up. Uh, and when I got home, I felt pretty good. I didn't feel any pain whatsoever down in the uh, surgical site area or the surrounding tissue. Uh, however, that did wear off in, in about a day and it forced me to then uh, submit to the, uh, the pain med, which they was prescribed by the hospital. And um, that unfortunately, it, it does work. Uh, it leaves you feeling rather loopy. I did take, I think, four, to four in total, six hours apart. So one full day of those. And uh, they have an after effect, a side effect in that it, they cause constipation, severe constipation, uh, which is the last thing you need when you have uh, hernia surgery because, you know, bearing down is difficult with the abdominal muscles being, you know, cut and sore like they are. Uh, so then I had also, uh, you know, as a uh, proactive um, item to my, my list of meds, I purchased uh, the stool softener in gel form and uh, just a generic brand and uh, some liquid stool softener, which I had to take and I did. And But they, that also has a side effect. It left me feeling very, very bloated and uh, to the point where that pain is more severe than the uh, pain of the surgery, surgery itself. So I wanted to wean myself off of that. I took pain meds only one day. Um, and uh, I was able to get off that and uh, manage my my pain reasonably well. And it took me about two days after that before my abdominal area felt, uh, I, meaning my gastrointestinal tract felt much better. Uh, all the bloating had gone away and uh, I was able to produce normal bowel movement. Uh, I'm on a normal high fiber diet anyway, so that is really not an issue. But uh, initially, that, that uh, pain med can cause severe constipation and be prepared for it if you have to take it. Um, have alternate plans available to either, some people go as far as t doing fleet enemas, etc. But, you know, I'm not, it was not necessary for me. But at a minimum, you're going to need a stool softener to uh, supplement that. Um, so being off the pain med rather early uh, allows me now to be more mobile and drive, but, um, which I enjoy because I like, uh, don't like being stuck in a house. But a lifesaver from the hospital that was provided to me, which you should you need to ask for, um, if you if you don't have a, uh, have one of these, this um, is, a, is a one of the best ice packs ice bags I've ever had. It's made by Cardinal Health. Uh, it was provided to me at no charge. Uh, maybe they put it in the bill at the hospital, but it has exactly the right consistency, thickness of fabric that separates the ice from your body. Um, you know, not like what we buy at the. Uh, at the local store for sports injuries, those plastic packs of glue gel, and you know you wrap it with a kitchen towel, and it never gives you the right level of cooling, uh, or it either gets, uh, you know, you can't put it on your skin directly; it'll burn your skin. This is a home run. So try to obtain one of these from your hospital before you you uh, you check out, because uh, this will be great when you're off the pain meds, uh, you know, because it's going to slowly sore down in the lower abdomen area and you can tie it around your waist if you need to. I just lay it on, on my my, uh, my stomach at night uh, when I go to bed and uh, the ice lasts remarkably long in this and uh, usually by middle of the night um, there's still some ice left, I'll take it off and I'm, I'm pretty good. I feel very, very comfortable. Now, uh, what are the after effects of uh, the surgery that the uh, uh, surgeon had told me would occur would be, um, you know, rather severe contusion and, and bruising in the uh, surgical site area. And I, I will show you that. I was not expecting it to this degree, but he warned me of it because uh, as patients get older, that is more prevalent in the healing process. Uh, when I was younger and had the other two hernias performed, I had minimal bruising. There was nothing really, no black and blue, nothing. So uh, let me just set the camera down for a moment. I'll show you. Uh, if you're an older patient, what you can expect, and don't be, uh, you know, surprised. It's nothing to be alarmed about. It's um, it's the normal process. But I also will say that uh, it, I retain quite a bit of fluid in that area for, uh, and I still have some in that area. Uh, uh, monitor my weight. I put on, I retain around four pounds worth of fluid in the lower abdomen, abdomen area, and that has since um, been diminishing. I'm almost back to my weight prior to surgery. So I'm happy about that, feeling much, much better, mostly about the uh, being off the pain med. But let me see if I can just gently show you the surgical site area and uh, the contusions. Let me just give myself some privacy here so I don't show too much and uh, scare you all away. 
Okay, so now you can see the surgical site is under the seri strip here, right here. And I, I chose to leave that in place. Uh, and uh, it will fall off by itself uh, by, you know, if I'm just from showering. But this area, you can see right here, and it goes down a little further, almost, you know, to the base of the pelvic, uh, pelvic bone. So uh, this is sore. It's tender and it's somewhat swollen. So I do put uh, the ice pack on this area at night when I sleep and I feel much better. But uh, there's no real pain at the surgical site, the incision site itself, and I feel, feel, and above it, I feel very good. But it's this area right here, this little pocket that is tender and swollen still, but had, you know, I had bulge out quite a bit. You know, four pounds of fluid is a lot of fluid, so you can imagine how this looked like. But I'm uh, feeling much, much better, and uh, this should diminish over time. I'm planning to see the surgeon next uh, follow-up or next Thursday or this coming Thursday. And uh, he's probably pulled this bandage off if it's not had not fallen off by then and uh, get his opinion on how things look. And me it, it, looking better I and mean, feeling better every day. So um, I'm very pleased with the result. I must say, pick the right surgeon. Don't take a beginner. And as an old expression, <laughs> uh, I saw it in someone's office once, uh, cheap meat ain't good and good meat ain't cheap. So get the person with the proper credentials and qualifications. Uh, hopefully someone with, has had done these procedures before uh, more than once, obviously. And uh, this, uh, this doctor, Sid Fezlesdiki, certainly has, and he's an excellent, excellent surgeon. And I said, again, uh, great bedside manner. A great discussion as to what to prepare for, what to expect, and, and, and a great outcome. So this is my third and last surgery from him. I'll report back again one more time after I have uh, met with him on this Thursday and let you know what his thoughts are. But uh, it, this is all going as planned. So uh, that's the report. Feeling better every day. God bless that we're all here on a Sunday. Still a beautiful day here in Long Island, New York. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.